e il Tip, prima della creazione del mondo, per essere santi e immacolati di fronte a Lui nella carità, predestinandoci a essere per Lui figli adottivi mediante Gesù Cristo, secondo il disegno d'amore della Sua volontà, all'ode dello splendore della Sua grazia, di cui ci ha giustificati nel Figlio amato. Parola di Dio. We now hear the passage in French, followed by English. De la lettre aux Éphésiens. Béni soit Dieu, le Père de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Il nous a bénis et comblés des bénédictions de l'Esprit au ciel dans le Christ. Il nous a choisis dans le Christ avant la fondation du monde pour que nous soyons saints, immaculés devant lui dans l'amour. Il nous a prédestinés à être pour lui des fils adoptifs par Jésus le Christ. Ainsi, il a voulu sa bonté à la louange de gloire de sa grâce, la grâce qu'il nous donne dans le Fils bien-aimé. Parole du Seigneur. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He destined us in love to be his children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. The word of the Lord. Lesung aus dem Brief des Apostels Paulus an die Epheser. Gepriesen sei der Gott und Vater unseres Herrn Jesus Christus. Er hat uns mit allem Segen seines Geistes gesegnet durch unsere Gemeinschaft mit Christus im Himmel. Denn in ihm hat er uns erwählt vor der Grundlegung der Welt, damit wir heilig und untadelig leben vor ihm. Er hat uns aus Liebe im Voraus dazu bestimmt, seine Söhne zu werden durch Jesus Christus und zu ihm zu gelangen nach seinem gnädigen Willen zum Lob seiner herrlichen Gnade. Er hat sie uns geschenkt in seinem geliebten Sohn. Wort des lebendigen Gottes. We have heard the same passage in German. We will now hear it in Spanish. Bendito sea Dios, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que nos ha bendecido en la persona de Cristo con toda clase de bienes espirituales y celestiales. Él nos eligió en la persona de Cristo antes de crear el mundo para que fuésemos santos e irreprochables ante Él por el amor. Él nos ha destinado en la persona de Cristo, por pura iniciativa suya, a ser sus hijos, para que la gloria de su gracia, que tan generosamente nos ha concedido en su querido Hijo, redunde en alabanza suya. Palabra de Dios. The last languages we will hear it in are Portuguese, Arabic, and Polish. Leitura da Carta de São Paulo aos Efésios. Bendito seja Deus, Pai de nosso Senhor Jesus Cristo, que no alto do céu nos abençoou com toda a espécie de bênçãos espirituais em Cristo. Foi assim que Ele nos escolheu em Cristo antes da fundação do mundo para sermos santos e irrepreensíveis na sua presença, no amor. Predestinou-nos para sermos adotados como seus filhos por meio de Jesus Cristo, de acordo com o beneplácito da sua vontade, para que seja prestado louvor à glória da sua graça, que gratuitamente derramou sobre nós no seu Filho bem-amado. Palavra do Senhor. 
as we hear the Arabic and Polish, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of you joining us for this live broadcast of the Holy Father's General Audience coming to you live from the Library of the Apostolic Palace. Some of you joining us through the various Vatican Media channels, the Vatican Media Live Events app, or the Radio Vaticana app, our Vatican News web portal, our English YouTube channel, or our Facebook Live feed. Others joining through television, thank you to all of you tuning in through the various television channels making this broadcast possible through Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World TV, Salt and Light TV, EWTN, Catholic TV, and at Madarshan TV. And to all of you radio listeners out there, a warm welcome to all of you as well. We've got some of you tuning in through Radio Maria in Papua New Guinea. Others through Luminous Radio, and to those of you joining through other internet sites, a most warm welcome to all of you. We now go back to the reading of the passage from the letter to the Ephesians, now being proclaimed in Polish. Oto Słowo Boże. We now enter into the catechesis portion of the audience. We will now hear our Holy Father's words prepared for this 17th part in a uh, catechesis on a series on prayer. And we are focusing on the prayer of blessing today as it's been introduced by the beautiful letter to the Ephesians. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. Today we will reflect on an essential dimension of prayer, blessing. We're continuing the reflections on prayer. In the creation accounts, God continually blesses life, always. He blesses the animals, he blesses the man and the woman. Finally, he blesses the Sabbath, the day of rest, and the enjoyment of all of creation, and God blesses us. On the first pages of the Bible, there is a continual repetition of blessings. God blesses, but men give blessings as well. And soon, they discover that the blessing possesses a special power that accompanies the person who receives it throughout his or her entire life and disposes the person's heart to allow God to change it. At the world's beginning, therefore, there is a God who speaks well. He sees that every work of his hands is good and beautiful. And when he creates man and creation is complete, he recognizes that he is very good. Shortly thereafter, the beauty that God had imprinted within his work will be altered, and the human being will become a degenerate creature capable of spreading evil and death in the world. But nothing will ever take away the original imprint of goodness that God placed within, that God placed within the world, within all of us. The capacity of blessing and of being blessed. God did not make a mistake with creation, nor with the creation of man. The hope of the world lies entirely in God's blessing. He continues to desire our good. He is the first, as the poet Peggy said, to continue to hope for our good. God's greatest blessing is Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of God. He is a blessing for all of humanity, a blessing that saved all of us. He is the eternal word with which the Father blessed us while we were yet sinners, St. Paul says. 
the word made flesh and offered for us on the cross St. Paul proclaims with emotion God's plan of love and he says it this way blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him he destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved there is no sin that can completely erase the image of Christ present in each one of us. No sin can, can efface the blessing, the image that God has placed within us. It's the image of Christ. Sin can disfigure it, but not remove it from God's mercy. A sinner can remain in error for a long time, but God is patient till the end, hoping that the sinner's heart will eventually open and change. God is like a good father. He is a good father and like a good mother, and he is a good mother. They never stop loving their child, no matter what he or she may have done wrong, always. What comes to mind is the many times that I've seen people in line in order to go into prison and how many mothers are there who are in line to see a child who's in prison they they never stop loving their child and they know that the people who are going by maybe on a bus they know that she is a mother of a person in prison but she's not ashamed of that they, they may be ashamed, but it doesn't matter. They go and see their son, even though they might feel ashamed. So we are much more important than any sin that we can commit because he is a mother and a father. He is love, pure love. He has blessed us, and he will never stop blessing us. Una esperienza forte what an impressive experience it is to read these biblical texts of blessing in a prison or in a rehabilitation group to allow these people to hear that they are still blessed notwithstanding their grave errors that the Heavenly Father continues to desire their good and to hope that they will open themselves in the end to good even if their closest relatives have abandoned them sometimes this happens some of them are like the mother who stays in line to see them others do abandon them they've abandoned them since they've judged them to be irredeemable but to God they are always children God cannot erase that image of a son or daughter at times miracles happen men and women who are reborn because they find that blessing that they have as children for God's grace changes lives he takes us as we are but he never leaves us as we are let us think about what Jesus did with Zacchaeus for example everyone saw evil in him instead Jesus spots a glimmer of good and from that from his curiosity to see Jesus Jesus allows the mercy that saves to pass through thus first Zacchaeus's heart was changed and then his life Jesus sees the indelible blessing of the Father in the people who are rejected and repudiated. This was a public sinner. He had done so many bad things. But Jesus saw that sign, that indelible sign of the Father's blessing 
And from that came his compassion, that phrase that is repeated often in the gospel, that he was moved to compassion. And that compassion is what moves him and helps Zacchaeus to change his life. What's more, Jesus came to identify himself with every person in need. In the, the passage of the, the protocol on which all of us will be judged, in Matthew chapter 25, I was there, I was hungry, I was, I was naked, I was in prison, and I was in the hospital, I was there. To the God who blesses, we too respond by blessing. And God taught us how to bless, and so we must also bless. It's the prayer of blessing, praise, adoration, thanksgiving. The Catechism writes, the prayer of blessing is man's response to God's gifts. Because God blesses the human heart, can, in return, bless the one who is the source of every blessing. La preghiera è gioia e riconoscenza. Prayer is joy and thanksgiving. Per incominciare alla marcia. God did not wait for us to convert ourselves before beginning to love us, but he loved us a long time before when we were still in sin. In sin. We cannot but only bless this God who blesses us. To, everyone needs to bless God and bless each other. This is the, the basis of Christian meekness, the ability to feel that we are blessed and the ability to bless. If all of us were to do this, surely wars would not exist. This world needs blessing, and we can give blessing and receive blessing. The Father loves us. The only thing that remains for us is the joy of blessing Him and of thanking Him and of learning from Him not to curse but to bless. And here, just one word for the people who are accustomed to curse, the people who always have on their lips or in their heart a, a bad word, a curse. Each one of us can think, do I have this habit to curse that way? And ask the Lord for the grace to change this habit because we have a heart that's been blessed and a heart that's been blessed from a heart that's been blessed, um, cursing can't com come forth. May the Lord teach us never to curse, but to bless. We will now begin to hear greetings from the various language groups represented here, followed by a summary of the catechesis we've just here heard. And our Holy Father will then greet each language group. We begin with French. À la fin de l'audience, nous réciterons le Notre Père en latin, puis le Saint Père donnera la bénédiction apostolique. Il accorde spécialement aux enfants, aux personnes âgées, aux malades et aux personnes qui sont dans l'épreuve. Voici le résumé en français de la catéchèse que vient de prononcer sa sainteté le pape François. Frères et sœurs, nous portons aujourd'hui notre attention sur la bénédiction qui est une dimension essentielle de la prière. Dans les premières pages de la Bible, Dieu ne cesse de bénir la vie. La bénédiction possède une force spéciale qui accompagne toute la vie de celui qui la reçoit et elle dispose le cœur de l'homme à se laisser changer par Dieu. 
L'espérance du monde réside entièrement dans la bénédiction de Dieu qui trouve son accomplissement en Jésus-Christ, sa parole faite chair et offerte pour nous sur la croix. Dieu se comporte envers nous comme un bon père et comme une bonne mère qui ne cesse jamais d'aimer leur enfant malgré ses erreurs. Pour Dieu, même les détenus sont toujours ses enfants dont sa grâce peut changer la vie, car il nous prend comme nous sommes, mais ne nous laisse pas comme nous sommes. C'est pourquoi Jésus voyait dans les personnes rejetées et refusées l'indéfectible bénédiction du Père. Notre réponse à la bénédiction de Dieu se concrétise à travers la prière qui est joie et reconnaissance. Ainsi, nous ne pouvons que bénir ce Dieu qui nous bénit et apprendre de lui à ne maudire personne, mais plutôt à bénir. Et maintenant, sa sainteté va saluer en italien les francophones. Saluto cordialmente i fedeli di lingua francese. Fratelli e sorelle, in questo tempo di avvento impariamo dalla Vergine Maria ad essere portatori di una parola di benedizione per coloro che soffrono e hanno perso ogni speranza. Dio vi benedica. Vous saluant en Italie. Our Holy Father said, I cordially greet the French-speaking faithful brothers and sisters. In this season of Advent, let us learn from the Virgin Mary to bear a word of blessing for those who suffer and have lost all hope. May God bless you all. Most Holy Father, the English-speaking faithful joining us through the media wish to express to you their sentiments of respect and esteem and to assure you of their prayers for your ministry as the successor of Peter. At the end of the audience, we will recite together the Our Father in Latin. The Holy Father will then impart his apostolic blessing, which he willingly extends to all children and young people, the elderly, and the sick. The following is a summary of the Holy Father's words this morning. Dear brothers and sisters, in our continuing catechesis on Christian prayer, we now consider the importance of blessing as an essential dimension of prayer. To bless literally means to speak something good. In creating and sustaining the world, God speaks a good word. He blesses his creation and sees that it is good. God did not withhold his blessing even after he, we turned away in sin, but continues to desire our good. In the history of salvation, the greatest of God's blessings is Jesus Christ himself. Saint Paul exhorts us to bless God who has blessed us in Christ and made us his beloved sons and daughters. In response to God's blessings, we in turn bless him, the source of all good, through our prayers of praise, adoration, and thanksgiving. As the Catechism teaches, the prayer of blessing is man's response to God's gifts. May we always find joy in blessing the Father with gratitude for the infinite goodness he has shown us in giving us his Son. The Holy Father, we now extends his greeting to all the English-speaking faithful in Italian. Saluto cordialmente i fedeli di lingua inglese. Prego perché la luce di Cristo illumini i passi del nostro cammino di avvento e dissipi le tenebre della paura dai nostri cuori. Su di voi e sulle vostre famiglie invoco la gioia e la pace del Signore Gesù Cristo. Dio vi benedica. I cordially greet the English-speaking faithful. On our Advent journey, may the light of Christ illumine our paths and dispel all darkness and fear from our hearts. Upon you and your families, I invoke the joy and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.
The summary will now be given in German. Heiliger Vater, die Gläubigen deutscher Sprache, die über Rundfunk und Internet teilnehmen, bekunden Ihnen, dem Nachfolger des heiligen Petrus, aufrichtige Verbundenheit. To one of them in the Holy Father's Catechesis. The Catechism says, Blessing expresses the basic movement of Christian prayer. It is an encounter between God and man. In blessing, God's gift and man's acceptance of it are united in dialogue with each other. The prayer of blessing is man's response to God's gifts. Because God blesses, the human heart can in return bless the one who is the source of every blessing. Two fundamental forms express this movement. Our prayer ascends in the Holy Spirit through Christ to the Father, we bless God for having blessed us, and it implores the grace of the Holy Spirit that descends through Christ from the Father who blesses us. And we can recall some of the important scripture passages regarding blessing the first great text we've heard from the book of Genesis, another from the book of Genesis from the call of Abraham in which Abraham's blessing is revealed specifically as a blessing. And the Lord said, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and by you all the families of the earth shall bless themselves. Cari fratelli e sorelle di lingua tedesca, il tempo dell'avvento ci prepara la venuta del nostro Signore Gesù Cristo. In Lui e attraverso di Lui Siamo resi partecipi di ogni benedizione. In comunione con Lui, anche noi vogliamo diventare per i nostri fratelli e sorelle una benedizione, trasmettendo generosamente i doni di Dio. Vi auguro un buon e fruttuoso avvento. Our Holy Father said, Dear German-speaking brothers and sisters, the season of Advent prepares us for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Him and through Him, we are made participants in every blessing. In communion with Him, we too want to become a blessing for our brothers and sisters, thus transmitting generously God's gifts. I wish all of you a good and fruitful Advent. We now hear the greeting in Spanish, followed by the summary given by our Holy Father. Desean manifestarle cordialmente sus sentimientos de filial afecto, que acompañan con sus fervientes oraciones por sus intenciones de pastor de toda la Iglesia. Al final de este encuentro se recitará el Padre Nuestro en latín, Después el Santo Padre impartirá a todos la bendición apostólica, de modo particular a los niños, a los ancianos, a los enfermos y a cuantos sufren. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, hoy nos detenemos en una dimensión esencial de la oración, <coughs> la bendición. Como nos narra el libro del Génesis, del inicio Dios bendijo la creación, afirmando que todo era bueno. Por más que el pecado empañó la huella de Dios en nosotros, nada podrá cancelarla. La bendición de Dios, su benevolencia hacia nosotros, es el motivo de nuestra esperanza. Dios siempre nos ama. 
Cristo es la gran bendición de Dios para nosotros. Con Él, con su palabra eterna, nos bendijo cuando todavía éramos pecadores. Dios, en su designo de amor y con infinita paciencia, espera hasta el último instante a que cada pecador abra su corazón a Él. Es una experiencia intensa el poder leer esta bendición en una prisión o en un centro de desintoxicación. Las personas acogidas en estos lugares perciben que Dios las sigue bendiciendo y no las abandona aún cuando sus mismos parientes y amigos las consideren irrecuperables. La gracia de Dios obra en ellos y es capaz de transformarlas. Ante la bendición de Dios, le correspondemos bendiciendo con una oración de alabanza, una oración de adoración, de acción de gracia. A través de la oración respondemos con gratitud a los dones que Dios nos concede. Dios no ha esperado que nos convirtiéramos para comenzar a amarnos. Dios nos ha amado primero, cuando todavía estábamos en el pecado. Caer en la cuenta del amor que Dios nos tiene, llena nuestro corazón de paz y alegría. Saludos cordialmente. I cordially greet the Spanish-speaking faithful. I encourage you to respond to God the Father's love, who has loved us in His Son, Jesus Christ, with the joy of blessing and of thanking Him for His grace. To learn from His goodness never to respond with evil, to evil with evil, but to bless always, because we are called to bless, to inherit a blessing. May the Lord bless you all. And we now hear the, the greeting and the summary in Portuguese. E asseguro as nossas orações pelas vossas intenções de pastor da Igreja Universal. No fim, rezaremos o Pai Nosso em latim, e depois o Santo Padre concederá a bênção apostólica a todos, com um pensamento especial às crianças, aos idosos, aos doentes e atribulados. Leio agora um resumo da catequese que o Papa Francisco acaba de propor. A bênção é uma dimensão essencial da oração. Ao Senhor que nos abençoa, respondemos, bem dizendo o por nos ter abençoado e pela bênção recebida. Nas primeiras páginas da Bíblia, aparece Deus ocupado na criação. À sua palavra surgem o universo e os seres que o embelezam e povoam. Depois, contemplando a sua obra, viu que era boa, muito boa. O Senhor alegra-se nela e diz bem dela. Deus bendiz e abençoa, sendo esta bênção dotada de uma força particular que acompanha e configura toda a vida do ser que a recebe. E mesmo que tal bênção pareça estiolar, como sucedeu com o ser humano ao degenerar no pecado, Nada poderá apagar aquela primeira marca de bondade recebida de Deus. Por isso, toda a esperança do mundo está posta nesta bênção imutável de Deus. Por exemplo, um ser humano pode permanecer nos seus erros por muito tempo, mas Deus continua pacientemente a esperar que aquele coração mude e retorne à sua bondade primordial. Mas ele não se limitou a esperar. Quando éramos ainda pecadores, recebemos do céu a maior bênção do Pai, o seu Filho, que se fez carne e por nós morreu na cruz. Bendito seja Deus, Pai de nosso Senhor Jesus Cristo, que nos abençoou com toda a espécie de bênçãos espirituais em Cristo. Está aqui a explicação dos milagres sem conta de homens e mulheres que vemos renascer. Eram incapazes, sozinhos, de retornar à bênção primordial. 
mas envolveu-os a graça de Cristo, que os tornou santos e irrepreensíveis em caridade na sua presença. É verdade, ele toma-nos como somos, mas nunca nos deixa como estávamos. Agora, o Santo Padre saúda em italiano os ouvintes da língua portuguesa. Cari ascoltatori di lingua portoghese, vi saluto cordialmente, augurandovi quell'immensa misericordia che il Padre ci ha dato nel suo figlio fatto bambino. Possano i vostri cuori e le vostre famiglie rallegrarsi per il Dio fatto uomo ad imitazione della Vergine Madre che l'ha concepito per opera dello Spirito Santo. A tutti voi, buon avvento. Eis a tradução das... Our Holy Father said, Dear Portuguese-speaking listeners, I cordially greet you, wishing you the immense mercy that the Father has given us in His Son, who became a child, a baby. May your hearts and your families rejoice in the God-made man in imitation of the Virgin Mother, who conceived him by the work of the Holy Spirit. To all of you, Blessed Advent. And now the greeting and the summary in Arabic. Another text of blessing that we may be familiar with is a text from which one of the solemn blessings that the priests use at the end of Mass comes from. It's from the Book of Numbers. When our Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron and his sons, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. And we can think of one of the last scenes narrated in the Gospel of Luke in the 24th chapter when Jesus, after his death and resurrection, is about to leave his disciples. And he says to his ap apostles, you are witnesses of all these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he departed from them and was carried up into heaven. Allah يريد لنا الخير ونحن لا يمكننا إلا أن نريد الخير بأقوالنا وبأعمالنا فنبارك الله ونبارك جميع خلائقه والآن تحية البابا باللغة الإيطالية لأبناء الشرق الناطقين اللغة العربية Saluto i fedeli di lingua araba Possa il tempo di avvento concederci il dono di amare di più il Signore Gesù e di attenderlo nella preghiera. Il Signore vi benedica tutti e vi protegga sempre da ogni male. 
Our Holy Father said, I greet the Arabic-speaking faithful. May the season of Advent grant us the gift of loving the Lord Jesus more and of awaiting him in prayer. May the Lord bless all of you and protect you from every evil. The final language we will hear the greeting and summary in is Polish. Pragnę złożyć Waszej świątobliwości wyrazy czci i oddania. Zapewniają też o swojej modlitwie we wszystkich intencjach związanych z posługą następcy Piotra. Na zakończenie audiencji odmówimy wspólnie modlitwę Ojcze Nasz po łacinie. Następnie Ojciec Święty udzieli wszystkim swojego apostolskiego błogosławieństwa, obejmując z nim szczególnie dzieci, młodzież, osoby w podeszłym wieku i dotknięte cierpieniem. Dziś rozważamy ważny wymiar modlitwy – błogosławieństwo. Od pierwszych stron Biblii czytamy, że Bóg nieustannie błogosławi stworzony świat, zwierzęta, mężczyznę i kobietę i błogosławi szabat, dzień odpoczynku i radości całego stworzenia. Potem także ludzie błogosławią. Błogosławieństwo posiada szczególną moc, która towarzyszy przez całe życie temu, kto je przyjmuje, i usposabia serce człowieka, by dało się Bogu przemienić. Na początku świata Bóg widzi, że każde dzieło Jego rąk jest dobre i piękne. Nawet gdy po grzechu to piękno odmieni się, a człowiek stanie się stworzeniem zdolnym do szerzenia zła i śmierci w świecie, nic nigdy nie może przekreślić tej pierwszej pieczęci Bożej dobroci. Nadzieja świata polega całkowicie na błogosławieństwie Boga. Błogosławieństwem Boga jest sam Jezus Chrystus. On jest odwiecznym Słowem, którym Ojciec nas pobłogosławił, gdyśmy byli jeszcze grzesznikami. Dlatego Święty Paweł łączy błogosławieństwo z Bożym planem miłości. Niech będzie błogosławiony Bóg i Ojciec Pana naszego Jezusa Chrystusa, który napełnił nas wszelkim błogosławieństwem duchowym na wyżynach niebieskich w Chrystusie. W nim bowiem wybrał nas przed założeniem świata, abyśmy byli święci i nieskalani przed Jego obliczem. Błogosławiącemu Bogu my również odpowiadamy błogosławiąc. Jest to modlitwa uwielbienia, adoracji, dziękczynienia. W katechizmie czytamy, modlitwa błogosławieństwa jest odpowiedzią człowieka na dary Boże. Ponieważ Bóg błogosławi serce człowieka, może z kolei błogosławić Tego, który jest źródłem wszelkiego błogosławieństwa. Powinniśmy odpowiadać wdzięcznością i tak jak On nie przeklinać, lecz błogosławić tym, których stawia na naszej drodze. Saluto cordialmente i Polacchi. Cari fratelli e sorelle, in questi giorni viviamo la novena dell'Immacolata. Vediamoci alla madre del Verbo Incarnato, che Dio ha conservato da ogni mancia e peccato. Ci protegga dal male e sia segno di sicura speranza. Domenica prossima in Polonia sarà celebrata la giornata di preghiera e di aiuto alla Chiesa dell'Est. Vi raccomando questa importante iniziativa e ringrazio tutti coloro che si impegnano a favore delle questie confinanti nello spirito dell'amore fraterno. Dio vi benedica. And our Holy Father said, I cordially greet all Polish people, dear brothers and sisters. In these days, we are in the Novena to the Immaculate Conception. Let us entrust ourselves to the Mother of the Word Incarnate, whom God conserved from every stain of sin. May she protect us from evil and be a sign of secure hope. This coming Sunday in Poland, the the day of prayer and help for the Eastern Church is being celebrated. I, I encourage you in this important initiative and thank you for those who, are, who have dedicated themselves to the Church's 
their neighboring churches in a spirit of fraternal love. I bless all of you. And we hear the greeting now being said in Italian. And we're reminded that at the end of this audience, we'll be reciting the Our Father in Latin, and at the end of saying the prayer, the Holy Father will impart his apostolic blessing, especially for children, for the elderly, and for those who are suffering. I would like to assure uh, my prayer for Nigeria once again hit by a terrorist attack Saturday, last Saturday. More than 100 farmers were brutally killed as they were working. May Jesus welcome them in his peace and console their families and convert the hearts of those who commit similar acts, which gravely go against God's name. Today is the 40th anniversary of the death of four missionaries of North America killed in El Salvador. The Sisters of Mary Knoll, Ida Ford and Mary Clark, and a, a volunteer, Joan Donovan. On the 2nd of December in 1980, they were kidnapped. They were raped and killed by a group of paramilitary. They were, um, they were offering their services during the Civil War, and they were bringing food and medicine to those who had to flee, especially to the families that were the poorest. These women lived their faith with great generosity. They are an example for all of us to become uh, faithful missionary disciples. I extend a cordial greeting to the Italian-speaking faithful. The season of Advent, which began last Sunday, may it be for all of us a moment of particular grace. And as is customary, my thought goes to the elderly, to the young, to the ill, and to the newlyweds. I encourage all of us, all of you, to live this period of preparation for Christmas in, in an attitude of watchfulness and generous research for the will of God. Thank you. We now pray the Our Father in Latin, and after that, our Holy Father will bless us. Pater Noster, Qui es in celis, santificetur nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fie voluntas tua, sicut in celu et in terra. Del nostro quotidiano da nobis, e dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut nos dimitimus debitorius, et ne nos inducas in tentation. Amen. Domine Fobiscum, Sindome Domini Benedictum, Aiutori Nostro, in Nomine Domini, Benedicat Vos, Omnipotent Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. And this now ends the live broadcast of our Holy Father's general audience here in the Apostolic Library. Our Holy Father mentioning the four sisters who were killed 40 years ago in El Salvador, Mary and Old Sisters Ida Ford and Mara Clark, Ursuline Sister Dorothy Kazel, and Jean Donovan, who was a lay volunteer. We remind you that this Sunday we will be live again with the Holy Father's Angelus message. We invite you to join us 
then again as well. As always, you can visit the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube accounts for coverage of today's general audience and other Vatican and world news. On behalf of Vatican Media, I'd like to thank all the technicians who've made this broadcast possible and to all of you for joining us. Laudetur Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ.